Germany is about to spend 4.2 billion euros on 200 new Puma infantry fighting vehicles, with delivery starting around mid-2028. On paper, that sounds like a familiar European procurement headline. Big number, big promise, long timeline. But the real story is hidden in the unit cost, because compared to the last Puma order in 2023, 50 vehicles for roughly 1 euro 50 cents billion, this new contract implies a steep drop from about 30 million euros per vehicle to roughly 21 million euros. The Puma is still priced like a tank but it is no longer priced like a political scandal. And that shift tells you a lot about where Germany's rearmament drive is heading, what it is learning the hard way and what modern armored warfare is forcing even wealthy militaries to prioritize. Let's start with the uncomfortable truth. A 21 million euros IFV is still an outlier. At that level, you are in the same price neighborhood as some main battle tanks and international deals. And not far from high-end platforms like South Korea's K2, depending on configuration and support packages. So the obvious question is, why does a vehicle whose job is to carry infantry and fight alongside tanks end up costing like a tank itself? The easy answer is German engineering, but that is too lazy. The real answer is that modern IFVs are no longer armored buses with a cannon. They are sensor platforms, network nodes, active participants in a combined arms kill chain, and increasingly, whether they like it or not, targets in a drone-saturated battle space. If you want an IFV that can survive, see first, shoot first, communicate reliably, and be upgraded over time, you are paying for a package, not just a hull. This is also why the unit price comparison across contracts is more complicated than it looks. The German contract is with PSM, Project System and Management, a joint venture of KNDS, Germany, and Rheinmetall, meaning the workshare, supply chain, and margin structure are embedded in a politically and industrially strategic framework. Each parent company reportedly ends up with roughly half of the 4.2 billion euros. That matters because defense procurement isn't just about buying vehicles. It is about sustaining production lines, preserving design teams, and maintaining industrial sovereignty. Germany is not merely purchasing 200 Pumas. It is buying continuity, an ability to build, modernize, and iterate without becoming dependent on foreign timelines or foreign export permissions. Now, why the price drop? The first explanation is scale. Ordering 200 vehicles is not the same as ordering 50. Fixed costs, engineering changes, supplier ramp-up, tooling, test and acceptance infrastructure are amortized across more units. That is procurement economics 101. But scale alone rarely delivers a clean 30% swing unless something else changes too. And something did. The contract is tied to a specific configuration path, Puma S1, with Germany already upgrading its existing fleet toward that standard. When you reduce configuration chaos, fewer bespoke variants, fewer unique national requirements, fewer last-minute changes, you reduce cost growth. The fastest way to make any armored vehicle expensive is to treat every batch like a custom prototype. At the same time, do not be fooled by the 21 million euros per vehicle headline. We still do not know the full contents of the procurement package. Defensive add-on modules, containers, spares, training equipment, maintenance tools, documentation, and integration work can shift the effective per vehicle number dramatically depending on how the contract is structured. Some countries bury support costs in separate lines, others roll them into the platform price. So the Puma may look overpriced compared to alternatives, when in reality you are looking at vehicle plus survival ecosystem. If anything, Europe is slowly being forced to admit what the war in Ukraine has made brutally obvious. The sticker price is not the price. The real price is readiness. How many vehicles are actually available, with trained crews, with parts on shelves, with software updated, with optics functioning, with radios compatible, with ammunition stocked, and with a maintenance system that does not collapse under operational tempo? This is where the Puma's reputation becomes relevant. The platform has been praised for protection and performance and criticized for complexity and availability issues. Germany has invested years into turning the Puma from a technological showpiece into a field-reliable workhorse. The shift to Puma S1 matters because it is designed to bring practical combat-relevant improvements rather than just more technology. Germany has already ordered the modernization of 297 Pumas to S1 standard, spanning 2023 to 2024 decisions, with completion expected around 2029. That modernization reportedly includes high-quality day and night cameras, integration of the MELS missile system, Germany's Spike LR-based solution for multi-role engagements, and updated radio and communications architecture. If you want a mechanized infantry force that can fight as part of NATO, that comms layer is not optional. It is the difference between coordinated maneuver and armored vehicles operating as isolated islands. 
And yet, even as S1 becomes the baseline, Berlin is already talking about an S2 pathway with a procurement adjustment anticipated around mid-2026. Why plan the next variant before the current contract even starts delivering? Because the threat environment is moving faster than procurement cycles. The most important sentence in the entire story is not about euros, it is about drones. Germany wants S2 to reduce obsolescence and add modern capabilities including counter-drone measures derived from solutions associated with the wheeled jackal Shakal concept. Strip away the branding and the message is clear. Armored vehicles that cannot detect, disrupt, or survive drone threats are on borrowed time. The IFV is no longer threatened only by enemy tanks and anti-tank missiles on the horizon. It is threatened by cheap quadcopters overhead, loitering munitions stalking from unexpected angles, and real-time targeting networks that turn any exposed vehicle into a coordinate. So what does Germany's Puma decision tell us about the broader European rearmament trend? First, Germany is trying to standardize and scale, and that alone is a strategic shift. For decades, European procurement often resembled a slow-motion compromise between industrial policy and military necessity. Now the pressure is different. Stockpiles are thin, readiness targets are public, NATO commitments are explicit, and timelines are dictated by deterrence logic, not peacetime convenience. Ordering 200 Pumas is not just a Bundeswehr internal matter, it is a signal that Germany intends to field a credible heavy mechanized core in the 2030s, not merely talk about one. Second, it shows how Europe is rediscovering the value of boring defense spending. Cameras, radios, spares, containers, modular armor kits, training pipelines. These are not glamorous, but they are what turns a platform into a capability. The Puma is expensive partly because Germany is paying to ensure that the vehicle is not a hangar queen. Ironically, the more you invest in operational robustness up front, the less shocking the long-term cost becomes, because you are buying fewer surprises later. Third, the Puma's price, still tank adjacent even after the drop, highlights a brutal constraint. Survivability and digitization cost real money, and they cost more every year. A modern IFV is competing for budget not only with tanks and artillery, but with air defense, drones, electronic warfare, satellites, and ammunition production. And if Germany is willing to spend at this level on IFVs, it suggests Berlin believes heavy forces remain essential, even in an era obsessed with drones and missiles. The logic is that drones do not hold terrain, infantry does. And infantry that cannot move under armor is infantry that bleeds. But there is a final question that hangs over all of this. Will this procurement produce combat-ready units on time? Or will it become another example of Europe buying exquisite machines in insufficient numbers too late, at too high a maintenance burden? Germany is trying to answer that question by ordering at scale, upgrading the existing fleet, and pre-planning S2 for the drone era. The Puma may still cost like a tank, but the more important point is that Germany is attempting to make it fight like a modern combined arms system, connected, upgradable, and survivable in the air-scouted battlefield. In other words, this contract is not just about 200 vehicles. It is about whether Europe can relearn wartime procurement discipline in peacetime, standardize, scale, simplify where possible, and modernize where necessary. Because in the end, the battlefield does not care how sophisticated your vehicle is on a brochure. It cares whether it shows up, whether it works and whether it keeps its crew alive long enough to matter.